Hello, my friend. It is FPS for Ash. Gentlemen, you play Call of Duty with the Dragunov. I'm in the woods with her. We are not the same. Gentlemen, have you ever been in an Eastern Bloc country that wanted to have advanced rifleman capabilities? Maybe push out a caliber out to distance, but not necessarily a sniper rifle. I'm talking about the designated marksman role. Well, thankfully for you, I probably have the most SVD platform rifles of the Eastern Bloc DMR set that I've ever seen in one spot. Josh, thanks for coming back on the channel, bringing out all these wonderful rifles that we can show off here uh, to my audience. I greatly appreciate it. Now, well, this is like the smorgasbord. It's a smorgasbord of essentially SVD rifles because we have Red Tigers, we got some Norinkos, we got some Hungarian, we got some Romanian, we got some, we got it all. We got the Eastern Bloc essentially yeah. of uh, DMRs. Well, yeah. do we save the best for last? We save the Red Tiger for, do we, do we, die, do we go hard on the Red Tiger Let, first? Or let's do we start over the, here and let's go all the way up to the uh, cream of the crop. Uh, we'll let the, the cream rise to the top. What do we got here? This is uh, Serbian Model 91. Uh, this is the more recent production. This is a new commercial gun. You can still get this gun pretty availability from what I understand. Um, this is made by Zastava. Fulfills the same role as all the PSLs and different rifles that you'll see. It's a designated marksman rifle, you know, maybe five, 600 meters. Not really meant for sniping, but meant for, you know, getting that guy in that murder hole while your rest of your squad does whatever they're gonna do. All right, I'm gonna shoot the Zastava. Range is hot. Very fun. Move on to the next one. Oh yeah, yeah, sorry, I got distracted. Yeah. This guy is the Yugoslavian M76. This one is in eight millimeter. Mm. Let's hold that guy. Oh yeah. So this uh, saw a lot of service, 90s Balkan, Balkans conflict. I can't even say that. Yeah, so this is a very iconic designated marksman rifle. Essentially just a long AK, not so much like an SVD. Mm. Same AK operating mechanism. Uh, difference between this is it's got a adjustable gas block and then that iconic Zerac scope with the um, long-term uh, cancer icon on there, you know. Why does it have the... Uh, it must give you like a minus 5% speed debuff or something. <laughs> but uh, oh. yeah, so eight millimeter, long barrel, milled receiver, very durable, another long AK. A lot of these DMRs you'll see are just uh, extruded AKs. All right, M76, eight millimeter Mauser. All right, going hot. <sighs> so the M76 does not have its firing pin, but good thing there's a place that we know of. Big thank you to Apex. Apex gun parts, that is. All right, now we're moving on. Remembering to put a firing pin into a gun is important. So a big thank you to SDI for being another sponsor of this video. Get accredited gunsmith training. Take your meme dreams to the next level. Learn how to work on firearms and get a job in the industry. There are, of course, other ways to do it, but SDI is a great option if you want to learn to be a gunsmith. So big thank you to those guys. This does not look like an AK right here, though. So this is a... Czech rifle. This is pretty much the closest thing we could think of to the Czech's version of the DMR. They didn't really have any, you know, PSLs or long AKs. This but, feels like a sniper rifle. Yeah, that's more of a sniper rifle. Um, you know, still probably there to fit the 500, 500-600 meter roll. It's got a Mosin base platform and a smaller scope on it. Why, so, why no scope? But zoomers we are. <laughs> this is one I'm excited to talk about. The rifle surrounded in controversy and mystery. Surrounded in controversy. So uh, this is a Hungarian SVD, the FEG one. There, were, there was a bit of a, a bit of a kerfluffle surrounding this rifle with another YouTube channel. Essentially, the controversy of this rifle is like you, you ever like um, you ever like walk up behind your mom as a kid and you like give her a hug and you turn her around and then you're like, that's not my mom. That's not at all what happened with this How rifle. How often this happened to you as a kid? It's so many times. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> what I understand, obviously this is a Dragunov, um, and it's got a few adjustments to it to make it sporterized mm -hmm. and less like a military Dragunov. From my understanding too, these were kind of built off parts kits. You know, somebody will probably comment and tell me that I'm wrong. Well, Might I mean, be the yeah, case. So, YouTube, you know, so. Pretty much a Dragunov. You can see the butt stock's a little different from your classic Dragunov. Same with the hand guards. Up here, we've got the front end of the muzzle end. You know, that's been sporterized. It doesn't have a brake on it um, in order to make it compliant to bring into the United States. Pretty much though, just a classic SVD. It's got that PSO style optic on it that you'll see on most Dragunovs. All right, Hungarian controversy rifle. Huh? Ah, no! Huh. There we go. 
Cool. So next guy, we're getting into some of the more exciting stuff. So here's a Chinese Norinco mm -hmm. SVD Dragon off. This one isn't chambered in 7.62 by 51 NATO. Uh, very, very gorgeous rifle. It's yep. got the laminated wood furniture on it. And you can see this one's a little bit more of a classic mm -hmm. Dragon off. It's got the um, you know integrated muzzle device there, longer barrel, and um, yeah, absolutely just gorgeous. DMR. I was doing some shooting with it yesterday because this one is chambered at 308. It was a lot of fun. We were pushing out the distance. Um, not crazy distance, of course, guys. Not like 500 yards. More so around like the 150 to 200 yards is what it felt like. It wasn't the doctrine. It was like a force multiplier for like a platoon. Yeah, they're Afghanistan area, 80s, you know, late mm -hmm. Cold War when they started pushing these guys out and, you know, having a DMR guy in each squad or platoon. All right. This guy again, 76 by 51, Narinko. All right, we got through it. Next up, we've got uh, Romania's take. A lot of these DMRs, you know, this kind of entered into the area when Russia was kind of like, hey, now start making this. And everyone was like, no. no. So they started making their own take on things. So Romania kind of did the same thing. There was some sort of issue there when Russia was like, hey, start making a Dragunov. And they were like, how about a really long AK? That's a, mm. that's a good idea. Here we are, so PSL, I mean, you know, this has been a very common rifle in the U.S. for a long time. Yeah. Really long AK that shoots 54R. Not much to say there. You know, offset handguards. Almost looks like a Dragunov, but not quite. Doesn't quite scratch that, uh, yeah. you know, Metro stalker itch. Pumpkin spice latte. I will say there's probably going to be a training curve with this stuff is getting used to your eye just being like boop, boop, boop by the rubber cup. There's a weird like, ah, you're not used to it. It's like that air test. When you go do the air test and they puff the eye, yeah, it's not, ugh, not pleasant. <laughs> I, want, I, want a, I want a PSL battle rifle. I just want to chop the barrel down and have a battle rifle. All right, what do we got here? So this is probably as close as you can get to a military issue mm -hmm. dragging off. This is a Chinese Norinco. It's got the right barrel length, front mm -hmm. end, all that. It's chambered 7.62 by 54R. This is a early import gun. It's got that beautiful laminated furniture. Mm -hmm. And so, um, yeah, I mean, this is this is about as close as you can get is just grabbing one off the rack for a Dragunov. China. From my understanding too, most of guns that were imported to the US mm -hmm. that are Dragunovs, you've got to do some stuff to convert them. Yeah. And these guys are pretty much just good to go out of the box. Pretty much it. So we were we were born in the wrong era to get all these kind of things. Really it's, wrong era being a Zoomer. Man, dude. Got the Norinco 545 made in China. Very pretty rifle. Very impressive. Very nice. I said, well, what a nice rifle. What a nice lens cap. So here's the last one here. We've got the Russian Tiger. Oh. Oh. 7.62 by 54R. This one's kind of got all the uh, commercial markings all over it. You can see the barrel's a little bit shorter on this guy compared to uh, some of the other Dragunovs. It's very beautiful. It's very cool to be able to hold one of these like a legit Russian SVD. Growing up in the gun culture, I was never aware of the commodity that was the SVD. I thought I was like, it's just an Eastern Bloc weapon. Why would I care? But turns out, you know, there's cult followings and they're really hard to get. And of course people love them. And now it's like, ding, I want my own. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's, what, that's what it essentially came down to. And it's just pretty cool seeing it out in person, get, getting some hands on with it. Yeah, you know, it's from a practicality standpoint, you know, there's probably better ways you can spend your money for a DMR type platform. But from just the coolness factor, it's hard to find a cooler rifle than the Dragunov. Blah! All right, all right, now the bell of the ball, ball of the bell, or Queen's Majesty. <sighs> I dig it. Slava Russia! If you've ever uh, played Metro 2033, drank a half gallon of whole milk, and dream about those scary monkey things on the library level, and woke up in sweats, um, you know, you subscribe to Patreon or whatever they do over here. I'm gonna try and do some rapid follow-up shots, essentially. Just a one-two, the pop-pop, you know what I mean? So we'll try it out, guys. Ooh, okay, that was a good one. 
All right, feeling good. There we go. Okay, do a little marksmanship, try and do like some practical accuracy nine hole stuff. Kind of like, I kind of like that kind of stuff. I love what Henry does over there at nine holes. It is very practical accuracy type of vibe. All right, so we're gonna take some shots at a little bit further distance. My guess is 250 to 300 yards. So we'll take some shots. There's these two white like looking targets slash rocks, top of this dirt. I'm gonna take some pot shots, see how close I can get at them. Just, just you know, just for fun. Why not? It's my YouTube channel, I can do whatever I want. Okay. Man, this thing does take you for a ride with that recoil. Huh, it's kind of hard because these are, I, it's hard to determine the size of those. They must be just some white rocks we're just taking pot shots at. I'm gonna switch back over the steel real quick, make sure I'm not going crazy. Okay. Okay, dope. Interesting hold. So this reticle, it's of course of the Eastern variety where it has the upside down V hash marks and then it has the hashes on the side. So essentially my hold for this, I don't know, that steel target, my guess has got to be at 150 to 200. The hold was slightly off to the right, kind of between the first V and the first hash. Interesting little hold. Very fun. I will say this thing was kicking my butt as far as recoil goes because I thought the I cup would have more relief, but it was a little stiff in the rubber. So it's like... <laughs> <laughs> Like it gets you, gets you a little bit. And I got like, whoa, on that first round for sure. Still very fun, still, still a good time. I wonder what the zero would be like just running irons real quick. So let's find that out. We'll pop the scope off. It's always fun, man, trying out these weird different guns and just seeing like the little idiosyncrasies that they have. It's still very, a different experience. Still very fun. And of course this one's also chambered in 308, a little bit of 308. So I do love this stuff, man, I do. It's a dirty job. Admin's got to do it. Zero for, let's do 200 yards. Irons. Two grizers off. Yet again, idiosyncrasies. Learning stuff about the gun that is uh, a little foreign to thee. Okay, a little high. Keep in mind, guys, I got really bad eyesight. Doing my best. Hard to tell where my zero's at, if I'm being honest with you. My marksmanship skills are failing me now with irons. Wow. So ended none of those shots. Try it with irons, no avail. You know what? Hey, sometimes you win some, sometimes you lose some. This is what it is, fellas. I'm not ashamed to admit when I take an L. It's part of part of being a grown-up. You gotta know when you lost. You gotta know when you know when you face defeat. But I do also not want to end on a bad note. So uh, I'm gonna throw that skill bag on and we're gonna we're gonna finish the string of fire like a champion. Damn you. Ah, hold on. That's gotta be all three hits. Oh, I missed. Yeah, whatever. I had a perfect flawless run earlier. We'll just use that. <laughs> Imagine naming a gun after two animals. A dragon and a tiger. Hey, why are you smoking so weird? This is the, uh... This is the Dragonoff smoke. <laughs> Could be more accurate with your smoking, but you're not quite, but it's still cool looking. The government doesn't want you to know this, but the Dragonoffs in Russia are free. I don't have any of them. This is a shout out to all you new manufacturers. Start naming your guns after cool animals. Dragons, tigers, musk oxes, otters, Welsh terrier. <laughs> all right, I cut. Mama always said I was born to shoot them for.